Hello everyone and welcome to this Lightarama tutorial. In this video, we'll go through the control panel's integrated hardware utility, first introduced in version 6.3.0. Prior to this software version, the hardware utility was a separate program with a gray color scheme and a variety of testing and configuration options, many of which were already integrated into other areas of the control panel in the first release of S6. Prior to using the hardware utility, you have the option to set up your networks. For this tutorial, I've already created the regular network on COM3. You can reach the hardware utility by selecting Controller Setup, then clicking on the top option, Hardware Utility. After clicking, the other tabs of the control panel will gray out while you search for and configure controllers. On the left side, you'll see the available communication ports you can scan for using the utility. If you've recently added a new port, click Refresh before making your selections. My already configured regular network shows up in this list, as well as COM port 1, which is a different device I won't be using for the show. If you happen to have a COM port connected you do want to use for the show, but you didn't set it up in the Networks tab prior to opening the hardware utility, you can click on the plus sign and configure the network here. With the new integrated hardware utility, you can scan multiple COM ports at one time, unlike the previous version. You can select to scan all ports at once using the check mark, or you can just choose one at a time. Over on the right, you'll choose what action to perform when you click Scan. Most of the time, you'll be scanning for a unit ID range. In the new hardware utility, you can change both the upper and lower limits of the scan, which will reduce your search time if you're looking for a specific unit. You also have the option to search for easy light linkers or directors to perform related updates. View the online help documentation to learn about situations for connecting these devices and performing a search. You can also use this utility to update the firmware on a Pixie link, or perform advanced actions if you ever have a malfunctioning device. Most of the time, you'll use the top selection. After choosing your range, press the Scan button to search all selected networks. Depending on how many devices you're expecting to see, you can choose to collapse or expand the top section to make more room for your list if needed. Once the scan completes, you'll see a list of all located units, including their COM port in case you search multiple ports at once. You'll see the type of device and the firmware version, along with the unit ID. A change in the integrated utility is that Pixie controllers now show all unit IDs associated to the controller's ports, rather than just the ID of port 1. This new feature will help you confirm that you don't have any unintended duplicate IDs among devices. You can configure any controller by clicking the respective button. With a traditional light controller like the CTB or LOR 1600, the most common reason to click this button is to change the unit ID. This controller is currently set to the default unit ID of 01, but by clicking this change button, you can set it to any other available number, and the hardware utility will process the change. A limited test lights function still exists within the new hardware utility where you can run tests on a specific channel or test all channels at once, just like in the original utility. For the full range of testing options, use the standard Test Lights tab of the S6 control panel after exiting the hardware utility. Within the configuration screen for the controller, you can also edit trigger settings if the controller is on a non-enhanced network, or load standalone sequences with no music or motion effects onto the controller itself. This is a great option if you're using the controller for a wireframe prop scene with multiple sections, or another simple animation project. To go back to your list of devices, click the back button in the upper left. Now we'll work on configuring a Pixie controller. With this controller, you do have the ability to change the unit ID, but the official Lightarama recommendation is to use the onboard dip switches to set the ID instead. The hardware utility can be used as confirmation of your ID settings. Below the ID and firmware options, you'll see choices to change the pixel type, the RGB color order, and the maximum number of pixels you'll be using on any one port, up to 170. In the advanced settings, you'll additionally have the options to switch the Pixie into CMB24D emulation mode or configure the ports to work with Lightarama singing faces. You'll see the same other option tabs along the top as we did with the other controller. Additional testing functionality for Pixie controllers is available in the Test Lights tab as well. If you ever need help with the controllers you have connected, you can find the hardware manuals by clicking the button in the upper right. When you're done configuring all of your controllers, click the back button to return to the control panel. 
And that's all for this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss a notification about new videos.